you've followed along, you've learned how to build a multimodal chat interface that can respond with text, analyze images, and PDFs. You've also learned how to use AI to generate images from text descriptions. They are both powerful features by themselves, but what if we could combine them? With tools, we can do just that. In this lesson, we'll extend our multimodal chat to support image generation through tools. The user can still upload images for analysis, ask questions, and have conversations. But now, when appropriate, the AI can also create images as part of the response. Let's dive in. We will use our multimodal chat implementation as a starting point. It already handles text, file uploads, and image display perfectly. In the API folder, create a new folder, generate image tool. Copy the route handler from multimodal chat into this new folder. Similarly, in the UI folder, create a new folder called generate image tool. Copy the page.tsx file from multimodal chat into this new folder. Update the component name and API endpoint. We will call this generate image tool page and the API endpoint slash API slash generate hyphen image hyphen tool. In the browser, you can navigate to slash UI slash generate hyphen image hyphen tool, and you will see we have a working multimodal chat interface. You can upload images, ask questions about them, and have conversations. But it can't generate images yet. Let's add that capability. Open the route handler, and currently it is a standard chat handler. Let's extend it with tool support. First, we need additional imports, so update the import statement. Add tool for defining tools and step count is for controlling the number of steps. We also need the image generation function. So experimental generate image as generate image. If you can recollect, this function generates images using AI models. We will also import Zod for schema validation. So import Z from Zod. Now let's define our image generation tool. Outside the post function, const tools is equal to an object. The tool name will be generate image. And we invoke the tool helper function with an object with the description property set to generate an image from a prompt input schema, which is a Zod object with one property prompt, which is going to be z dot string dot describe the prompt to generate an image for. And now for the execute function, this is an async function, which receives the input prompt. And within the function body, we call generate image with dolly three. So await generate image. The model is openai dot image model dolly three. We pass in the prompt. We set size to 1024 by 1024 and provider options for openai style vivid quality hd. From the resulting object, we will destructure the image. Finally, from the function, we return the base64 encoded image data. So return image.base64. Now, as it stands, this tool will generate an image and return this base64 encoded image data back to our AI for processing. But this encoded image is so large that it will exceed the context window of our model. To prevent this, we will send a simpler response to the AI using the to output model method. So right after execute, we'll add to model output. This is a function which receives the result from execute as its argument. However, we don't need to use it, so I'm going to leave it out. We will just return a simple text response that conforms to the model message format. So we return an object where type is set to content and value is an array of objects. And we specify type is text and the text content generated image in base64. To be clear, we are still generating the image and we can access that as tool call output in the UI. 
but we are not sending that image data back to the AI. Instead, we are sending this object, which is sufficient for the AI to understand how to respond in the chat interface. I will of course show you how to upload the image to a storage and use the URL in the next lesson. But for now, this to model output method is a simple way to prevent the image data from exceeding our context window. But now that our tool is ready, let's include it in the post handler stream text call. Tools, key and value are the same. So use the shorthand notation. And then remember, we need to allow multiple steps. The AI will need to understand your request, call the image generation tool, process that result and respond back in natural language. So set stop when, step count is two. Next, we need to update our TypeScript types. So update the imports. We need UI data types and infer UI tools. After the tools definition, and just before the post handler, export type chat tools is equal to infer UI tools type of tools. And in the next line, export type chat message is equal to UI message. There's no metadata, the standard UI data types, and then our chat tools. Update the post function to use the typed messages. So this is going to be an array of chat message type. Our route handler is complete. Now let's update the UI to show image generation. In the page.tsx file, first import the chat message type. So import type chat message from generate image tool. Update the use chat hook to use the type. Use chat and we specify chat message. Next. We will handle the tool generate image parts in our message rendering. So find the switch statement in the message parts rendering. And after the file case, we're going to add a case for tool generate image. To render the different tool calling states, we need a nested switch statement. So switch hard.state. And I'm going to quickly add a default return null. And now we can handle the four different states. Since we've been through this already, I'm going to paste the code and then walk you through it. First case is input streaming. We're going to render the text receiving image generation request and a JSON stringified version of part input. We're basically showing we are receiving the request with the prompt. The next case is case input available. We display the actual prompt being used for generation. This helps users understand what the AI is creating. Now for output available. Here we show the generated image. So the text generated image and the image component from Next.js rendering our tool output. Remember the tool returns base64 image data. So we create a data URL and assign it to the image component source. Finally, handle errors with case output error. We render the text error generating image with the error text. And we can remove this return null statement. Our UI is now complete. Let's test this feature. Navigate to slash UI slash generate hyphen image tool and start with a simple request. Generate a single image of a baseball cap. Press send and watch what happens. You see generating image for a realistic baseball cap. And after a few seconds, since image generation takes time, we can see the generated image. The AI might also add a text response describing what it generated. The image appears right in the chat flow, just like any other message. So our interface now supports both image analysis and generation. Now some models tend to be rogue and create multiple images for a request. So I'm trying to tame it by specifying I want a single image but please feel free to experiment with different prompts and see how it goes. Our image generation tool is working as expected. Let me quickly summarize what we have done. First, we started with our multimodal chat interface that could analyze images and PDFs. Then we added the ability to generate images through tool calling. We added a tool to the route handler that can generate images from text descriptions. We used the two model output method to prevent the context window exceeded error. We then updated the UI to handle 
the tool generate image parts in our message rendering. This pattern we've established here could be extended to other creative tools as well. You could add tools for generating audio, editing images, creating charts, or any other visual content. The combination of natural language understanding and creative generation opens up endless possibilities for AI-powered applications.